filled with airplane peanuts. I dated a stripper. She Ooh, brought it out of you? She was a filthy animal. She brought it out of you. <laughs> and she would make me spend my... We could do a gig, get yeah. like 400 bucks. Yeah. She'd make, take me to the 400 dollars and she'd dump me. Then we'd get into a fight, and I'd get thrown out into the street with $18 after I just bought groceries at the house. I'm like... And I would take, like, the prime beef with me, like, walk down the street. <laughs> like, I'm, 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 I'd take the Leave the clothes? The, you're bringing the yeah, food? Yeah, I would take the food, just give it to a homeless person. <laughs> Just the last time we You're not fought, gonna have this, bitch. The last time her and I fought was in L.A., and she was spraying <laughs> me with mace, and I was throwing uh, like a prime rib at her. Yeah. We fought on the street <laughs> next to Vista, in between Santa Monica Boulevard and Sunset. She, Nineteen. She hit you with mace? I didn't know she hit you with mace. She was shooting me with mace, oh. and I was blocking it with the meat and swinging at her with the fucking meat. <laughs> we're, we're swinging at each other. And after that, we're like, listen, man, <laughs> once you shoot Mace at your boyfriend and he hits you with me, it's time to really break up. Yeah. And we broke up, and today we're great friends. I love stand-up more than anything, so I don't mind, you know, grinding as, as hard as I possibly Like, tomorrow I'm going to – tomorrow I'm going to take a flight at midnight to New York. I land at 9 in the morning. I'll do two podcasts, and then I hop on a flight to Russia. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people just won't do that. A lot of people will be like, I, I, I'm i going to be tired. So I, I'll just subtract tired. I'll subtract a lot of shit that's fucked up. Like, friend, like I haven't seen a lot of my friends' kids. It fucking sucks. But, like, there's certain things you got to sacrifice if you want to be great at things. You didn't get put on this planet to be, look at kids anyway. You're going to look at your own kid when you have your own <laughs> That's kid. for Epstein. You could be the funniest guy in the world. It's a but game. But if you're not dog. selling the ticket, it's a game. they're not going to talk Boom. to you. It's simple as that. And I didn't know that either. When I got here in 98, I'm like, oh, I'm killing up at the store. Because we think it's about what killing. It's it ain't about it's killing. It's not about killing. That killing shit is for you and me. It's not about killing. It's not for them. That's a personal thing that yeah. you want to do on your own. That's it. I want to go give them everything the fuck I got. Mm -hmm. But there's people I see on TV. I was watching some Disney Channel with my daughter. And I had to go to the ice house that night, and it was some fucking challenge of the network kids or something. Mm -hmm. And one of the hosts was an ex-comic that I knew from years ago, and I watched that show, and I felt so bad for him. Mm -hmm. like, he's like, isn't that great? Yeah. That's what I want to do, be a universal <laughs> yeah. with some fucking whoop next to me, <laughs> yeah, yeah, being yeah, an yeah, announcer yeah. at the Special yeah, Olympics yeah. for kids. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'd rather be at the Funny Bone in Columbus fucking slinging dicks yeah. up on stage, <laughs> rocking it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, this weekend, if you're a comic and you're on Labor Day, I... I I applaud you yeah. if you took the week, but ain't nobody going to come, especially on the East Coast. Yeah, yeah. They're all grilling outside, yeah, yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. waiting for Hurricane yeah. Donny Osmond, whatever it's fucking name. <laughs> you know, uh, there's certain weeks that we don't have the time, yeah. you know. Uh, there's no reason for me to work Father's Day, Mother's Day, yeah. Easter. I got a family. I also, if you don't have a life, you don't have comedy. You don't have comedy. Yeah. It's, so, uh, yeah, like you could tell the motherfuckers that don't have a life because the bitch got no soul. It's like... I don't know. Like, I imagine even having a daughter, that changes your comedy. It's like you got more soul. Your soul expanded. Listen, the first 10 years of comedy, I had nothing. I had yeah. no responsibility. And the comedy reflects it, right? I had a, pay, like, I had yeah. a pager. <laughs> I had a fucking car that had no bumper, no yeah. insurance, yeah. no brakes. Yeah. But the love of comedy yeah. overrode everything. Sure. It sure. usually does. It overrides everything, yeah. you know? Uh, but the comedy itself needs life, man. Like, even like getting in a relationship, getting out of a relationship, like, you could tell when like a comic has just experienced something because there's something for them to fucking chew on. And then you could tell the guys who, like, you know, they just don't have anything. So they can write really clever jokes, but there's nothing behind it. There's no passion. Like, I would rather hear you rant about a horrible Uber ride than hear some guy's clever Uber joke. And he can have more punchlines in his joke, but I know you felt that way about the Uber ride. I know you really felt these fucking things about the guy in the front seat and he didn't move the passenger seat back so you could have, like, whatever the fuck that is. And he was talking on the phone in Arabic, and I kept thinking he was talking to me. You ever go on those Ubers? And you're like, what? And they're like, I'm talking about that. And they're like, who the fuck are you talking to? You haven't shut the fuck up since the airport. Who the fuck are you talking? Who the fuck? An hour are you on the phone. Who wants to talk to somebody when they're on the phone for an hour? It's like black yeah. people. You ever see black people? 
They go to get pizza and they're on the phone with somebody. <laughs> Still on a Bluetooth. Is it, I'm the type yeah. of motherfucker that they get pizza. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Dog, let me get two slices. Pepperoni. Yeah, I told that bitch. Yeah, let me get a let me get a great you know, whatever the fuck they're eating. Then they have a conversation, and that person's still yeah. on the fucking phone. I'm yeah. like, hey, hey, conduct your business. I got to get off the phone. I ain't trying to listen to every fucking word you're saying. Get the fuck off the phone. It's like you said, there's really no excuses. You go out there, man. As whatever. Just fucking Even do if it, you want to be a drummer or whatever, but you have to stick with it. See, that's the problem. Yeah. People do something for nine months. Oh, it didn't work out. Who gives a fuck? Stick with it. Do it for 18 months. Do it for, well, man, now I'm getting 50 hits. I'm like, okay, then do it for another nine months. Man, you were right. I'm getting 90. Yo, it's crazy because people want to go from zero to a million. Yeah. It can, it and it's like. Or they want to go viral. They so drive bad. me crazy. Listen, like, this, this, this video will go viral. Unless you got a dog who lights his asshole on fire, <laughs> you, you, you got a chance of going viral like chlamydia. <laughs> That's the only chance you got to go viral. I was disappointed for two minutes. I didn't hear back from Netflix. Yeah. Like, that's how disappointed I was. Yeah. Great company. They gave me a great opportunity. I don't know how to... A friend of mine had an expression growing up. And he used to always say, sometimes it's better to want than to have. When I, when I got the call for the Degenerate special... I just agreed to it. I didn't think it out. Right. And it really pissed me off that I would be so careless at the age of 55. Right. I've been careless all my life, and I yeah. thought out every fucking move, you know. When I heard that it was being shot in a pool room, I, you know, there was just so many things that weren't who I am. Right. But I didn't give a fuck. Right. I, I had my mouth open like one of those Michael Jackson accusers. <laughs> I was going to Australia, and I was staying next to him. You know, that's why I sympathize with those Michael Jackson <laughs> yeah. accusers because because yeah. he wanted it. One minute you want it, yeah. you know, suck a dick on the way. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> that's why Harvey Weinstein in my world, yeah, he yeah. might go to rape. If, he might go to jail if you if he raped somebody. I want Harvey Weinstein right. to go to jail. Yeah, but unless you lived in L.A., you won't send Harvey Weinstein to go to jail. Yeah. Because people will. There's a woman out there that's 26 that's gorgeous, and she will get on her hands and knees yes. and suck a 60-year-old cock that tastes like death. <laughs> tastes like death. I mean, you know, I mean, I smell my dick sometimes. It smells just fucking god-awful at 56. I can't yeah. imagine what woman would, you know, yeah. suck a dick to get put in a movie. It will be done out here. Oh, an Oscar winning it's movie. It's a shortcut. It's a shortcut. Yeah. It's a shortcut. People love shortcuts. And I don't even blame them. I, no, you cannot blame them. Because they don't care about the art. They just want to be famous. And, so and, you're just going to do whatever makes you famous. And what happened to me was when they called and said, yeah. Netflix, Netflix, everybody's like, Netflix, you're going to be so lucky. Yeah. It wasn't until I got there that I said, I didn't think this out right Yeah. I didn't think this out right. And then yeah. I went on stage and had a bag of dicks. Yeah. And I was even more pissed off, yeah. Andrew. Because it's like, if I'm going to eat one, it's yeah. going to be on my, on term. my terms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's one thing that I maybe helped out with comedy is like ushered in the expectations of the viewer. The viewer is fine with a comedy club now. That's where all of us put our clips. And I think that's where, you know, I, I maybe put out there in the world that that's where comedy should be seen. So now that it's okay to do in a comedy club, not a fucking Carnegie I, Hall. I can't stand that shit. Just put it the fucking, fucking cameras crazy. up. Let them go. Don't tell anybody. Didn't they do one happens. of the greatest specials at Dangerfields? Bro, I mean, Didn't they do one of the greatest specials at Dangerfields? What? Many. Several at Dangerfields. Several, several. And it's like. And that club sucks. Today. Bro. There's nobody in there. Holy though. shit. Nobody's it's in there. It's too though. comfortable. They're like sagged back in the seats. <laughs> but it's, they're such nice people. Dude, Where do you work? You want to know city? what Weinstein's dick smells like? Go to Dangerfields. Go to Dangerfields. I love Take it. Take a whiff you know of that couch. Time? We're very lucky. We, we All the shit you were talking about. You, I would love to do a special and see a chandelier fall and the guy do 10 minutes on the chandelier yeah. falling. You know, that's what I live for. Yeah. But the networks, you know, oh, it's got to be polished. Contrived. You know? Uh, you know, and I've seen people nitpick specials over years, and it's for no reason. The bottom line is 
Is it funny or not? Is it real, man? Well, the, well, the lighting wasn't. Give the, a fuck. Shut the fuck yeah. up. It doesn't and matter, you, dude. And you <laughs> yeah. Prove that all wrong. You for giving all those motherfuckers that said, "Well, you need to spend two hundred fifty thousand and get a crane and ten midgets to dance and <laughs> a long opening." I even loved your opening. You're talking to some black guy. <laughs> He's selling you a nickel bag. You get up and you go do your thing. Nobody got, and you went right out there, attacked the fucking Korean. Yeah. And I'm watching all this. And I'm Payback. Like, this guy doesn't give a fuck. That's why he's doing what he's doing. And the audience he has is reading this. Yeah. That he's going against whatever Comedy Central thinks, whatever Netflix thinks, whatever HBO thought of comedy, whatever True TV thinks. I don't know what the fuck they're thinking. You know, there's like eight of Vice Land, shoot yourselves. Yeah. There's like eight <laughs> networks to just. There's like eight networks that you would say, you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> you really think about how many networks in your heart you would really want to go on. It's tough, man. In, in your heart that you would go, I really want to go over there. But if you're going to put me after, who the fuck wants to go on Comedy Central? Hey, there's nothing there. You're there's nothing there. there. There's it's nothing dead. there. They're going out of business. And they go deeper and deeper Bro. into the hole of whatever show. Bro. Like, really? That's your answer. Yep. Oh, shit. <laughs> There's eight guys doing tremendous podcasts. And this is the fucking moron you picked for later. It's fucking mind boggling. It's mind boggling. Fucking Crab Feast is doing better than most of your fucking shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's his name? Ryan, Ryan Sickler. Ryan Sickler. Shout out to Ryan, man. Sickler's a fucking savage. Yeah, yeah. Put him on a fucking show at 11 yeah. o'clock and let's have three fucking normal guests. Yeah. But the people that they keep putting on and shoving down your fucking throat, and you're supposed to like them, one day you're like, I don't even, what do I like this fucking person for? They're doing everything for me to like them. I like people that do things for me not to like them, like <laughs> you. You're not supposed Because uh, I don't care if you like not, me or not. He's not uncommonly yeah. sensitive. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He's better. He's on his own fucking there time, his own universe. Put the money up. What do you want for a million people that fuck with me heavy to see your brand? What does that mean? I mean, because once we start doing that, once we start going direct to the advertiser, shit, it's over. It's like we don't need anybody. We literally need nobody. We need HBO and Netflix, et cetera, because they're the ones that have the money. But once we get the money direct and nobody's chopping it, why would you go anywhere else? Why would you go anywhere else? Does it make any sense? No. I think, I mean, that was part of the reason why I dropped the same day as Chappelle. Like, I released it the same day as Chappelle because I was, I was like, that's a $20 million special. And I wanted to put out a special that was $0 million. And I wanted you to watch them back to back. And I wanted you to tell me, I want, to true, I want you to truly watch them back to back and then just be like, wait, did I laugh $20 million more? That's brilliant shit. I just I wanted. Did you sell coke in high school? <laughs> I tried to sell weed when I was in Spain, man, but I wasn't good at. It. So I was like, if I do this, I'm gonna do this the right way. I asked a thousand questions. I got a job. Yeah. As like a door guy at a club. Yeah. I asked a thousand questions. Yeah. I knew the other day somebody wrote, uh, you know, restock your shirts. You could make more money, and I'm like, if I wanted to make money, yeah, I would have got into selling cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I got into this in the beginning, <laughs> yeah, yeah. from day one. <laughs>